Hello, everyone. It is now 2 p.m. Eastern, and so we are going to go ahead and begin to respect everyone's time. My name is Daniel Elliott, and I'm Director of Education and Strategic Initiatives at the National Cybersecurity Alliance, and I want to welcome you all to today's webinar. I, I'm excited to have this webinar today because uh, this is part of an annual series um, with the Better Business Bureau and, and the National Cybersecurity Alliance. And it's our digital spring cleaning campaign. And it's really our effort to encourage individuals and businesses as they're doing their spring cleaning, you're cleaning out their offices and their files, and everything else, to be mindful of security. And also to think about how they can digitally spring clean. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm really happy to have the Better Business Bureau on the call with us today and our uh, wonderful sponsors, Generali Global Assistance, um, who we'll be talking to here momentarily. So just to give you a bit of background before we dig into the content, uh, the National Cybersecurity Alliance is a public-private partnership or a nonprofit focused on convening partners who recognize strength in the security collective, right, bringing people together, educating individuals on cybersecurity best practices, and amplifying collective efforts to increase cybersecurity awareness. We know we can't do it all, um, and so we want to be sure that um, we're amplifying other organizations' efforts as well so that we bring as much education uh, as we can across the country and heighten awareness in cybersecurity. Now, we do all of this through many of our um, national scale campaigns. So some of you may have participated in National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, uh, and I, I'm thankful if you did, and I hope you participate again this year. Um, that's recognized every October, and we co-lead that with the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Um, and you can learn more about National Cybersecurity Awareness Month at staysafeonline.org. Um, we also have Cybersecurity Business, which I'll talk more about here on the next slide, and Data Privacy Day. Uh, if you're really interested in the privacy space, we encourage you to be become a champion of Data Privacy Day and get involved, and that's recognized every January 28th. And you can learn more about Data Privacy Day as well at staysafeonline.org. You can also follow us on Twitter at, at staysafeonline. Now, Save to My Business, this program is our um, effort to educate the nation's small, medium-sized businesses on cybersecurity best practices. Um, so we do that through webinars such as this. Um, we do that through in-person workshops. Well, we used to do it through in-person workshops. We're, we're working on um, looking at how we can pivot that model uh, in today's state. Uh, and we do that through our newsletter and infographics and tip sheets that we push out um, to our cybersecurity business um, subscribers. Now, all of this is free and open to the public because of our generous sponsors. So I would be remiss if I did not thank our signature sponsor, Trend Micro, and our affiliate sponsor, Generali Global Assistance, for making all of these available to all of you for free, both the in-person workshops and the uh, tools that we push out electronically and our webinars. So I want to thank them for making all of this possible for you all. Now, for the next hour, we're going to hear from um, Patrice Bobola and Sandra Guile. Patrice is the head of global IDP knowledge and QA from Generali Global Assistance. And Sandra is the director of communications at the International Association of Better Business Bureaus. And so I am going to uh, have Patrice kick us off here. Let me just unmute him and I will move advance to his slides. And uh, Patrice, I will let you um, take it away. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Well, uh, thank you again for having me. I'm very pleased to be part of this initiative. Um, now, one of the, the most important thing is to, again, understand that um, the day and age in which we live requires uh, to have not only the knowledge of identity, um, digital life, and the, the kind of risk that we, we are exposed to, but um, when we are becoming business owner, there is an even higher level of responsibility that we have to take in consideration. And, and again, I, I thank you for the opportunity to speak on it today. Um, and as we were talking about spring um, cleaning, uh, and again, yes, there's the time for um, the, the, the normal spring cleaning. There is also the digital aspect of things that we need to be aware of. 
Um, I'd like to start by, you know, bringing up a little bit of uh, understanding of why is digital spring cleaning important. And to do that, um, there are three um, essential point, not to be exhaustive, but three essential point that I think every business owner, every small business, every organization should at least uh, be able to pay attention to. And again, the, the main reason to understand is that when taking care of your spring cleaning um, helps you continuously, one, assess and to maintain the security and the reputation of your business. Um, if those are the things that concerns you, then definitely you have to um, make sure that you get your spring cleaning up and going. And if you don't mind moving to the next slide, maybe there, um, Daniel. So the first thing I, I want to talk about is assessment of the existing and future data collection. Um, and one of the thing with, with sprinkling is that you have piled things throughout the year and the, the previous year, and then you've reached the place where, okay, I need to clean up, I need to dust things off. Then you realize that there are things that you need to throw away, things that you need to keep, things that you need to um, basically uh, make sure that you see the value or the need to keep them. And one of the major thing nowadays that we have to be aware of, it's uh, the data that we are collecting. And um, featuring one of our white paper, um, generally we do believe that um, it's important that any organization, small business or big businesses um, are aware and should be aware of the kind of data that they're collecting. And in that time, you're basically asking yourself the question, is this a nice to have data or is it an important type of data that I have? And also remember that the more data we are collecting, uh, the more responsibility lays on our shoulders. And also we are prone to uh, be targeted by hackers or unauthorized uh, employees. Um, that again is, it falls under the responsibility that we have. So when we talk about assessing the existing and future data, we have, you always have to make sure that we are looking at what are, what kind of information, well, we said we're talking about data, but let's say information. What kind of information are essential for us to continue to run our business? What kind of information um, we may have to consider non-essential? And as the digital life and age in which we live evolves, we have to consider what is important and what is not obsolete instead of just keeping collecting data in just any kind of way. Um, the second point, uh, that I want to uh, bring up is the awareness of potential cybersecurity threats. Um, again, there is a, a tight collect, uh, a connection between the kind of data that we are collecting and the awareness that we have to develop when it comes to uh, cybersecurity threat. If we are collecting data that we do not understand, have, or hold a value for hackers or for potential fraud, then we might be negligent on how we handle those data and we handle those information. Uh, let's say, for example, if you are in a business where you are collecting credit card inf information, um, yes, you become aware that credit card information are, are, are of big value. But now, um, and you might neglect the fact that uh, a person's full address, date of birth, and social security number uh, um, may also be relevant. So, and then the collection of all those things are just making a bigger, or could make, uh, cause a bigger impact on someone's life. Therefore, when you're collecting those information, if you do not need a social security number, you shouldn't collect the social security number because then doing that, you are not aware of the kind of cyber, uh, of the kind of threat that you may be exposed to. And um, one of the thing that also in, encourage um, a lot of business owners to take the time to to be aware of the different type of uh, cybersecurity uh, threat that are out there. Uh, notably, and the, the main ones that you still have phishing that is one of the big issue um, that uh, a lot of company are facing. And again, um, looking into our um, the the concerns that we have when it comes to identity theft, most of the the issues that we have is that phishing still remains one of the high level of how information are uh, taken away. You receive an email, you click on the link you're not supposed to click on, and that becomes an issue. 
So that's just um, a little thing there to say, but it's important that as business owner or uh, as anyone who collect data that we educate ourselves on the various uh, cybersecurity threat that we as business, we are exposed to, or that also we can expose our client to. And the third um, point that I want to talk about is the preparation for the unexpected. Um, there, there's no better time to talk about this than now where many company um, are now forced to move into the virtual environment. Um, for some that, are, that were already prepared for that, then there's no big deal. And because then there's an understanding that you have to be on a, under a secure network, you have uh, to make sure that the credential of whoever is accessing the network are authorized, all of those things. But many, now we live in the world where uncertainty is the most certain things that we have to, to be aware of. And that requires us to be prepared. Now, when we are looking at our security, um, for the, the the way we protect the data that we have, the way we behave online as a business, we have to also be prepared for anything that can come and disrupt the normal way of businesses. And that is something that is very important. And in the spring cleaning, help us continuously assess those things. What threats you're exposed to um, in the event something change, how are you going to move securely this set of data to this kind of environment, who is going to have access to um, those kind of data as we as we um, are moving into the unexpected of things. Um, now, if we can go to the second um, or the third slide, I should say, and we will talk about this responsibility that I've, I've been mentioning from the beginning. And we have this one simple phrase, if you collect it, you must protect it. And now to collect it and protect it, you also, some business may not necessarily be aware if you are new in businesses, this may be um, a challenging topic to talk about, but there, there, there are valid reasons why business do collect data. And Daniel, if you can go ahead and list them up there for me, please. So there is the nature of the business. Now you have to understand what kind of business you are running, what kind of organization you are, and based on that, there is a set or a kind of data that you may be responsible to protect. Um, if you are in the cybersecurity environment, you may be responsible to protect other businesses, uh, their um, information. If And there is the, the new age of the digital world we are in that is actually pushing even sometimes pop and mom stores or businesses to move into the digital world and again, the goal also of collecting data is to enhance the customer experience and sometimes to maximize uh, with the goal of maximizing the return of investment. So all of those things are reason why business do collect data. But now once you've collected them, your responsibility are the one listed. Um, go ahead and then Daniel, please list them for me. Again, you have to protect, you have to be aware of the protect of consuming of the consumer and company's data. You you are now aware that based on these data, I have to make sure that I protect uh, the consumers and also the company's data. Because again, if those information are exposed, you run the risk of losing your reputation. You have to be in, you have to build a mindset that is designed to reduce the risk of potential data breaches. Uh, data breaches are really, really big. Um, a lot of company are losing a lot of money due to that. It's important to be aware on how you do your part to reduce the risk of potential data breaches. Um, there to consumer privacy protection regulation. Uh, you have the CCPA that was signed in 2018. You have the GDPR. Um, if you are doing business at the international level, you have to come. You have to comply to these laws because they are designed to protect the consumer's data. And one of the most important things is that you have to be transparent in the marketplace. And the transparency we're talking about is you have to let your consumer know, your customer know, or your client, your partner know why and how you intend to use the kind of data you are collecting. Otherwise, you can expose yourself to lawsuit and practices that may be questionable. Uh, let's move on to the next slide, please. So just go ahead and, and list the uh, quick step, a couple of steps that we think are important here. You have to take the inventory of the data that you've collected. 
you have to conduct an audit of personal personnel access to all data. So you have to basically design uh, a plan of knowing who has access to what kind of data at all time. You must know and also revise um, if these people who have access to search data are still or should still hold access to those data. We have example where somebody's promoted to a position of supervisor um, into another department that still hold access to data that are no longer relevant to his position. Those kind of access during your spring cleaning are things that you have to review. You have to secure and or discard personally identifiable data. Uh, when, when an employee is no longer part of the company and you've disconnected them, you have to make sure that you discard securely those data and information. And so is the case with customer calling you and say they no longer want their data in, the, in your database, uh, or if you no longer do business with someone, how do you make sure to go away uh, to remove those data? And you have to create a plan to store and secure the data that you collect. This is a must. And again, sprinkling should be a reminder, just like we're changing our batteries for our smoke detector, it should help us go through those things. Um, and, and on the fifth position, maintain an up-to-date cybersecurity response plan. It is very important. Having a response plan will save you a lot of money in the event that your company suffers a data breach. If you do not have a response plan, this is the time to think about that and how to build one. Uh, provide an ongoing training to all employees on security information management, cybersecurity threat. Um, we, we, we have identified that a lot of issues with data breach comes from employee negligence or just simple mistake, honest mistake, but that will cost you as a business owner uh, a lot of money. So it's important that all employees are aware of your company's security information management and also uh, conduct some ongoing security, cybersecurity threat exercise to keep the team, uh, your employee and your personal up to date. So that's, uh, that's all I have for you, um, Daniel. All right, Patrice, thank you so much. I think there are a few points um, that I'd love to underscore. You provided a lot of really great information. Um, you know, one, just identifying the data, right? It, you, mm. you can't protect what you don't know you have. So I think exactly. that is so important to underscore um, for our audience today. And I also want to emphasize um, two additional points. One, when you mentioned uh, those you do business business with and access management, removing access when you no longer work with them. I think it's also important to stress to some of our business owners who are on the call that you need to understand how, if you are doing business with someone, how they grant access to your systems and how they remove access to your systems. And so having control not only of who you are physically giving access to, but how your business partners are granting access uh, uh, because we see a lot of third party breaches um, for organizations. So I think that's a really important piece uh, that you touched on. And then the last one, which we see a lot, particularly with small, medium sized business community, is that um, access management again internally this time, where you grant that promotion as you talked about, whether it's lateral, up, down, you know, whatever it is. Um, making sure that people have only the amount of access they need to do their job. And, and so I know you probably see this a lot as well, where people, organizations think that the more access people have or employees have, the more efficient will be. Um, maybe because if someone's out sick, then someone else can take up their responsibilities or you know, a whole host of reasons. Yes. And so um, <laughs> making sure that we only grant access to individuals um, so they can complete whatever they have to do for their job and no more. So I, I really appreciate you um, touching on those points. And um, just so you're all aware, Patrice is going to stay on the line and we're going to have Q&A here at the end, right after Sandra um, talks. And so I'm going to mute you for now, Patrice, and uh, we're going to move forward with a um, presentation for the Better Business Bureau. Good afternoon. How are you? 
I'm doing well. How are you, Sandra? I am doing well. Thank you so much for having your Better Business Bureau on this presentation this afternoon. We're super happy to be here. Um, I'm sure many out in the audience is familiar with our services. Uh, you may see the IABBB, which is the International Association of Better Business Bureaus. We're basically, I guess you could say, the overarching organization over all of the Better Business Bureaus in North America, the United States, Canada, and Mexico. And we work with all of our BBBs in all of these areas uh, to help continue to provide the support and trust in the marketplace between consumers and businesses. So my first order of business is to thank all of you small businesses out there that are doing your absolute best in this rough time right now, these trying times right now. Um, if there is something that we can help you do, by all means, please reach out to us at bbb.org and let us know what we can uh, try to help you with. Uh, today we're talking about securing your ID. Um, I think Patrice raised a lot of fantastic points when it comes to data security uh, when it comes to management of that electronic data and businesses thinking about what kind of data am I collecting? How am I interacting with customers? Enhancing that customer service. One other point that should be brought up is that a lot of you probably had a transition from brick and mortar face to face to online work from home uh, activities do you know what equipment is out there floating around in cyberspace or in somebody's kitchen table or a, a rapidly put together home office? So it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to do an inventory of what was leased out as far as laptops or man monitors or anything like that. And to make sure that all of that antiviral software is up to date if you're at all possible to track that information. Now, for those of you that are a little bit smaller, maybe one to two people in your mom and pop shop and you do a lot of paper, uh, Daniel, if you can move forward just one slide, please. Maybe you've got a lot of paper sitting around and you've got old records or bank statements and stuff like that. And you're really super looking forward to spring because you know but your Better Business Bureau perhaps has a shred day. Well, I am so sorry to report this darn coronavirus has put a big old wrinkle in a lot of our plans. So we are asking all of our BBBs across the United States to let them decide if they're going to or not going to host a shred day. Uh, this is for the safety and security and for the health uh, to maintain that social distancing has been mandated by several of the states. Um, I would strongly recommend that you reach out to your local BBB to confirm their status. Again, you can go to BBB.org and see what that brings as far as if they're going to still host a shred day this month or next month. Uh, same thing with e-cycling. If you are aware of your local Better Business Bureau hosting that type of event, reach out to them and say, hey, y'all planning to still have this type of activity? Um, this month, are you going to hope maybe delay it until fall? Because hopefully, and I'm actually crossing both fingers here, maybe some sense of normalcy will come back this fall. We'll all see. That's up to the decisions to the powers that be. But if you do have a stuff that is shreddable that you think, you know, is taking up too much space because you are doing your spring clot, you know, cleaning, you're cleaning out the closet. And the same is true for consumers. Take that stuff, put it in a box, set it aside, and just know that there's going to be opportunities for you to shred that. Just don't lay it out in a dumpster. Don't rely on the recycling bin or anything like that, unless you've got a little shredder at home that you can shred some of that stuff. Because the last thing you want to do is lay all that personal information, banking information, credit card information out there for somebody who's still out there on the streets and gathering up there and could possibly steal your identification. And I really would hate for that to happen to you. So just hang on to it for now. Uh, know that your BBB is trying to look out for you and for consumers and businesses and know that we're going to try to have our shred days and try to get back everybody out there. But in the meantime, check our website and see if your BBB is having a shred day. Next slide, please. So those electronic devices and again, Patrice brought up a lot of great points when it comes to data and protecting that data. And all of us have these wonderful devices called cell phones and tablets and you know, we're all on the, the WebEx and the Zooms and everything else. 
But when we're, you know, the few times we make that essential grocery trip or we're online with our loved ones or even clients, think about that cell phone. It's actually a little computer. And whether we know it or not, tablets, smartwatches, and cell phones are also considered microcomputers. And they're connected everywhere. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, hotspots, or even our provider's network. Your data is flo floating out there in cyberspace. In fact, mobile traffic has grown exponentially just in the last five years or less. And there's more mobile users than there are desktop users. So whatever internet browser you choose, Google, Chrome, um, what is it, Firefox, Internet Explorer, pick one. All of them are now tracking what we're doing when we're doing our lovely search, whether we're, whether we're doing something on DoorDash because we're hungry or we're shopping online because we need the essentials. Pick your, pick your poison. We're being crawled around by bots and they're collecting all kinds of information. So think about that, especially if you are a small business and you're promoting your items and stuff like that. Um, see where you are on your searches and stuff like that. So it may seem impossible to keep our online online activities quiet, but try to, con you know, if you're a consumer, try to keep it contained by looking at your settings and your portables by reviewing what it has been connecting to lately and disconnecting it. If you're a business, you might be curious from a marketing standpoint as far as what are my customers doing and interacting with my business. And you might want to check and see what those little bots are doing and, and what kind of things are being picked up about your business and keep an eye on what your online reputation is, which could be a whole other series. Um, as far as apps are concerned, on your device, are there any unnecessary apps that you haven't swiped in a few months? Is it just taking up or eating up space on your phone that could be reducing the, um, the, the well-intentioned activity on your phone or the performance of your phone? and deleting them actually may free up some space. You can take more pictures of your dog or something like that on there. Surfing online, there's a ton of cookies out there. And there's spiders and bots and other critters that are tracking your habits, like I mentioned before. Plus, hackers love this information because they collect it. When they send that phishing email to perhaps your employees that are working remotely or even in their off times or your off time, if you're thinking, well, I don't know if I actually have check that account in a while, so maybe I do need to re-up my password or change my password. And do I have the same password for maybe more than one or two or three accounts? When was the last time I checked my password? These are all things that you probably need to think about, especially this time of year. How strong is that username? Did you use any of this info in your most recent social media posts? We're noticing actually at Better Business Bureau quite a few people that have been sharing graduation pictures, most favorite car, first car, favorite team, football player, basketball player, whatever it is on their social media. These are some common um, items that are used in usernames and passwords. And believe it or not, there are cyber criminals out there that are watching this stuff and just gleefully, gleefully figuring out ways they can send a phishing message either by social media posts or phishing or texting or anything like that. Or if they haven't figured out how to get into your Facebook password to take over your account and let others know that, you know, hey, I'm surfing around for money or you fill in the scam, if you will. So be careful what you post online. Um, I put up there, what does Google really know about you? But that can go for any internet search. Go to any one of the search engines. And if you type in your name, you type in your business, see what's being said about your online reputation. Are there steps that you can take to protect that? Are there sites that you can apply to them and say, you know, can you take down this website or, you know, can you figure out a way to block them from saying anything about you? Uh, dumping an old device, let's face it, breaking up is hard to do. You know, I, I'm sure there's probably a phone or two that all of us have that we've had forever and it's been working but just fine by golly, but we all know eventually it's going to get really super slow. We can't send text messages or maybe the phone quality is not the greatest. So it seems like every two to three years, probably, or four maybe, our connectivity to the internet requires an upgrade. And if that is the case, like I mentioned before, some of our BBBs do offer e-cycling, but I'm sure there's other services out there that still do that. Before you take it in for e-cycling, see if you can do a hard reboot or swipe of your entire hard drive. This goes for businesses and consumers before you take it in. But before you do that, 
take all the important stuff off accounts, photos, and everything else. Um, Elliot, you're going to have to walk me through this. It looks like I have a question popping up in chat for me. Do I just click on the chat button? Yeah, we can actually take questions after after you after the account. Okay, we'll cool. Kind of, we'll do them all at the same time. Yep. Fabulous. Thank you. All right, online reputation. So for businesses, believe it or not, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're online, if you're, um, you know, word of mouth or anything like that, criminals love to spoof. They use you guys for employment scams, disasters, crisis, insurance fraud, or maybe it's just a really super unhappy employee that had an unpleasant relationship with you. For consumer or in, in cybersecurity, uh, it was mentioned before a little bit as far as data, how that data can be used and how they can be used in phishing and hacking and ransomware. So that kind of thing can always happen. And unfortunately, you know, this happens on a regular, it happens all year. It doesn't happen during National Cybersecurity Month. It doesn't happen during Spring Cleaning Month. It happens all the time. So it's becoming more and more of a risk as technology becomes more and more advanced. And data breaches, uh, they can happen anytime from within inside the company or even just through email. And now that many people are working from home, that risk goes up exponentially, especially since many companies had to pivot quickly in order to protect their workforce. For people, consumers, social media, there's account takeovers, there's instant messaging takeovers. And that's where people have to start thinking, who has access to my accounts? Who did I share my password with? Maybe I shouldn't have, you know, shared my password with my ex-boyfriend's girlfriend, whatever the situation is. And again, what does the internet really know about me? For families and young adults, it's even tougher. I've got a teenage son who is bored out of his mind, but we made sure we kept a lockdown as far as any kind of social media activity because we don't have control. We wouldn't have control if we didn't know what was going on as far as Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. Because let's face it, we all know there's not a lot of really nice and honest people out there and young adults face really tough situations out there if they're not thinking about what they're putting out there and who's watching them, what they're putting out there. And if you're a young adult looking for a job, I'm sorry, but employers do look at your Facebook profile. Next slide, please. So if you're wanting more information, we have been busy at Better Business Bureau and we've got these wonderful websites for you to take a look at for different articles, for business tips, for consumer tips, um, and more information on several of the topics that I just touched on. And of course, you're more than welcome to reach out to us at bbb.org and chat with us or give us a call and let us know how we can be of assistance to you. Thank you so much, Sandra. I really appreciate that. And I, I, I value the partnership that we have with uh, our BBB so that we can continue to push out information like this uh, to the small medium sized business community across the country. And, just, you know, we have a lot of organizations that join this webinar that are not small medium sized businesses, <laughs> but they can all <laughs> take advantage of the information um, that you are um, putting out there. So I really appreciate that. And there are a few points I'd, I'd love to. Um, underscore with you as well. I think as far as, you know, this audience goes, you know, one thing we see a lot is, again, that the updating privacy and security features. We see a lot of people mm -hmm. neglect that, particularly when they sign up for a new account or purchase a new device, right? One of the first right. things individuals should be doing is configuring those privacy settings. You download that new app, you should restrict what it's sharing because all these devices and these websites are naturally going to default um, to sharing the most information <laughs> about you. And Absolutely. so organizations and have to lock that down. And secondarily to that, and I know everybody and their brother is going to sit there on this webinar and they're going to all groan at the same time, is that read the privacy settings in the first place, see what you're agreeing to. Um, and a quick point to that is that especially, this is especially true for subscription services. You're going to notice a lot of the streaming services or any new app that you sign up for on your device or even for small businesses. If you're looking for different ways to generate an income or sign up for a new website, read those clauses carefully because they may have extra bells and whistles that they're giving you for free. But that free date ends at a certain time. So be careful you don't get gotcha by that. Ooh, that's great advice. Thank you. 
there was a um, oh another point that's not necessarily about business, but you brought up, and I want to underscore it for those um, parents or guardians on the call, right? You mentioned um, uh, kind of ha having uh, oversight or monitoring children, whether they're teens or young children, and you brought up a good point about they have to under understand what to share, what not to share, and I think that's a big point to make because a lot of um, people, when they're parenting, they enforce parental controls, but that doesn't teach a young individual anything about information security or privacy. But having a conversation right. with them, coupled with parental controls, and the same goes with organizations, right? You can have a, a bunch of policies and procedures and technologies in place, but employees, just like children, know how to get around <laughs> security controls <laughs> and so how do we talk to them and just like what what treat that educating your employees and so i think that's an important point uh, yeah, it, it's it's a very important for, for teenagers now parents if you if you're on this call um i've already experienced this as, as you have to get ready for the eye roll get ready for the deep sigh get ready for the shoulder plug um you know shrug for bosses out there uh, directors and managers, you're going to get the same thing from your employees, regardless of age. Um, my son just happens to be, have a strong interest in IT and security. He's already hacked through some of the parental controls, and I've had to figure out a way to put either reinstall them or just look at them and say, look, I know what you're doing, so let's sit down and talk about this. Um, and we just kind of restrict, yeah, yeah, we've had to, but it's obviously a little bit different in the workforce because if, say, uh, I was the boss and I had an employee doing that. There's other disciplinary measures that I, I would have to take because that is a security issue. You are protecting the data that you're collected, as, as Patrice mentioned at the very beginning of our conversation, you are protecting and, and collecting information that either affects our consumers, affects our suppliers, affects monetary income that is supporting your business, right? So if you've got somebody that's doing that, obviously they're not following the rules as they should be. So there are rules in place for a reason. And that's kind of the same stance you have to play with, or in, reinforce, not play, reinforce with said teenager, young adult that is utilizing the Wi-Fi that you're paying for in your house along with ever said de device. It sounds a little totalitarian there, but sometimes you have to bring down the hammer to help them understand. If you post something online, it ends up in the dark web, or it ends up in some other person's hands that you don't want them to end up in, you gotta have that conversation. You gotta have that honesty and that open policy. And it goes back to the cybersecurity plan for businesses. If you get everybody on board and you explain to them, hey, look, this is the reason why we have this in place. It's really important if you wanna maintain our business's integrity online, our online reputation, our customers trust with our businesses. That's what keeps them coming back and keeps you employed it makes it a little bit easier. That's great, thank you, that's a wonderful point. And so I'm gonna unmute Patrice, and so now we're gonna to go to the Q&A section, but while um, we collect some of your questions in the Q&A chat box, I'm going to let you know about some of the resources uh, that we've put together to help you, and then we'll go right into those questions. And so first off, I just wanna direct everyone to the Small Business Digital Spring Cleaning Checklist that we uh, put together with Better Business Bureau. And so it underscores a lot of the points um, that we covered in today's webinar. And so, but it's in a, a checklist format and you can visit it at stay safe or, or view it at staysafeonline.org in our resource library. And so it's two pages, quick and easy, something you can share with your employees, use as a lunch and learn uh, video conference with your staff. Um, and so uh, we should, uh, we hope that you take advantage of this free checklist. I also wanna let you know while we're collecting some questions that this is part of a larger series. Um, and so our next webinar, which is on May 5th, Oh, no, I'm sorry, on April 21st is focused on e-commerce cybersecurity. So as small business, small medium sized businesses are losing foot traffic um, because of the coronavirus and moving to more uh, 
e-commerce platforms or mobile, uh, mobile payment devices, how can they secure those? Um, we'll also be, uh, Patrice will be back with us uh, with the Federal Trade Commission and some of our friends at Trend Micro to talk on May 5th about COVID-19 scams, not only um, cybersecurity scams, but in-person scams um, as well, telephone scams. And so we'll be covering that. And then on May 12th, we'll be talking about phishing, phishing, and smishing. So what are they? What are those threats to your business? And how can you protect yourself from them? And so a lot of great content coming up, um, all free at staysafeonline.org. And so with that, we have some time for Q&A. And there are a few that have come in. So the first one that came in was, how relevant do you think online reputation is for small businesses, and how can they monitor um, their reputation online? So how can they do that digital spring cleaning online of, the, of their reputation, for instance? And I, I'll open it up to either one of you. Bruce, do you want to take a stab at that one? I'll stop. How about I start it? Did I unmute um, Patrice here? Yeah. So I'll start. Can you hear me? So I think, you there know, he is. There he is. Oh, Sorry. Oh, we can hear the, you. <laughs> yes, I, I had physically mute the microphone to avoid a, a accident. You know, with the COVID-19 <laughs> staying at home and uh, working at home, we have a lot of um, external situation that can happen. <laughs> um, so but yeah, that, for that, my dog to bark. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so going straight to the, the, the question that was asked um, about the relevancy of, of uh, the online reputation. Um, it, one of the things that I mentioned in the slide was the age of the digital where the digitalization of age that we live in. Um, the online reputation becomes the most relevant thing for businesses nowadays. Now, if I'm looking for something, if I want to know if a business is legit, the first thing I will do is to go online. I'll go read about it. I'll go read what it said about that company. I'll read the review. So um, whether it's a small to medium or a big business, everyone are um, to be aware of their online reputation. And absolutely, uh, there is a need. Uh, a lot of companies who have the, the budget uh, do have um, either a, a way of monitoring uh, their online footprint or an actual team that is designed to respond to their social media interaction. Um, I, I would share this. I, I was not a big fan of Twitter and I'm still not, but I understood that a lot of things, a lot of company pay more attention to a complaint that you put on, that you put on Twitter um, versus one where you are calling to complain, uh, to, to, to share a bad experience that you've had um, by calling specifically in the company. But when you, you go ahead and you start um, Sandra was mentioning earlier, you start sharing um, your, 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 the experience that you've had, you are prone to receive a quick answer because, again, companies are aware of the impact that that could have to their reputation. Um, and so it, it's so important because nowadays you, you, the, the, the kind of mindset that we have is um, I do not have time to go and shop, to go drive around, around to look for a specific business that can meet this one need. What I'll do, I sit on 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 on. I sit on my computer, read about a couple of company, read about a couple of restaurant, and if I like what I see, then I'm I will just have this one drive uh, to the place where I'm looking to do business with. Um, so yes, um, they should have every company, small to medium businesses who begin to have a footprint online. Um, should essentially design a way to uh, monitor the activity, the social uh, network. They, it, it's it's more, it's very very important. Um, even if you think I'm just a mom and pop shop, uh, the the way you are, you, your customers are finding you. It's based on an experience that one person had and went on Google or on Yelp and share the experience there. And that begins to create the food traffic to your place. So it's very important. Oh, I don't need anybody else. Well, and, and to back that up, we're actually seeing quite a few people go to BBB.org to look up businesses to see what kind go. of customer reviews and customer complaints that have been filed against a business. 
uh, we have as much information as is given to us to provide that information, whether you are an accredited business or a non-accredited business, you can find a lot of information on them. Um, and to your point, Patrice, you're absolutely right. I monitor the the accounts, the social media accounts uh, for BBBs, and there's quite a bit of traffic on, on Facebook, mm -hmm. on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Not, not so much LinkedIn, but more so on Twitter and Facebook regarding customer service and customer um, disgruntledness or satisfaction uh, to that end as well, as far as people that are running into issues, running into situations that they're not able to find a resolution to or finding answers to, depending on what their situation is. So yes, online online reputation is crucial, even to micro businesses with less than employees. Uh, that uh, that reputation is so vital because that is the first people, like I was alluding to earlier, everybody's got a cell phone, everybody has a portable device. That is the first place they go to. Um, the only difference is with the, the Yelps and the online uh, search engines that you go to is that our information is already fact checked, it's background checked, especially with accredited businesses, but we do go the extra mile to make sure that the business is registered with the state, they've got the insurance and all the information on our files is double checked and accurate. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, no matter, and I would just add to that, uh, again, yes, that advice definitely pertains to any size business. Uh, you always want to know, no matter what size you are, what information is out there online about you. Um, one, so you can take corrective action if it's incorrect or mm -hmm. slanderous or whatever it is. Or um, if it's great information, you still want to know about it. Um, and so it's always great as part of this, you know, digital spring cleaning that in this um, resiliency planning that you do for your business. You you want to understand um, what's being said about you or what accounts are out there um, in your business's name or in your personal name um, that you need to shut down or you need to reinvigorate. And so it's always just great to. Um, search for yourself um, and do it, have a thorough understanding of how you're represented online. Because as Patrice said, that's how people engage with you at first sight, right? That's their, um, their first glance at you as a business and so, um, or as a person representing the business. So you want to make sure that that's nice and clean. And, and, and absolutely, a, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say right now, especially um, during this kind of crazy time in history that we are experiencing right now, trust is essential. So what you're trying to do right now, as far as um, who you want to do business with, you want to find the most accurate information. So if you are a small business owner or medium sized owner, large corporation, you want to know what is being said about you and can your customers still trust you? If I, if I can add, um, uh, recently we've seen a spike and maybe that's jumping into the next uh, webinar a little bit, uh, but just to give uh, a little bit of uh, from support to, to what Daniel, uh, Daniel and, and Senator was just saying, um, one thing about the reputation that we're seeing happening is that now, even those who are familiar to specific website um, where they used to shop online, now there's a level of hesitation that is now um, happening, and that is because there is there are situations where there are reports of of scam mm -hmm. um, that has happened on one's website where the the name of a company was used and 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 pushed someone to to become victim of a phishing or a scam, right? And then now the 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 persons just go on Facebook and say, "Hey, I went to um, this company." very reputable company that I know. And when I was making a purchase of hand sanitizers, um, I, I was assured that the order would come. But then when I went back, find out the order was never placed, but money was taken out of my bank account. Now, from that alone, the trend that happened is that now people, they, they would check and double check. Uh, they won't just click on the website because again, now they're concerned uh, of the validity or the, the, the trust that you mentioned the trust. Now the trust there is not in, is is not questionable. It's like, do I truly believe am I I'm, I'm on the right website? Which should be the attitude that we have from the beginning. But what I'm really trying to portray is the fact that people start losing trust 
or are becoming hesitant, even if it's a website where they used to shop every day because now they're concerned that the reputation may be tarnished. Is it that the website has less security? Is it that somebody was just skillful hack, a skillful hacker uh, and we fell into the, the, the trap? So all of those things begin to affect the brand of that, that company. Absolutely. And and we're actually seeing reports of that. Um, for, for those of you listening in on this webinar today, thank you for joining us. Um, we have a, a tool called Scam Tracker. It's at bbb.org slash scam tracker. And when you come across instances like that, that's where you can report it. Uh, scam Tracker is a tool that is used by law enforcement uh, agencies across the United States. Uh, at the local, state, and federal levels, and they will use that information to track down those cyber thieves um, and try to, you know, use it in their investigations to see what, what kind of scams are out there. And it, it tracks everything from the phishing schemes to there's several, several COVID-19 schemes that have reported been reported there to employment schemes. I alluded to this earlier. When I was saying that businesses are targeted for using their name and their good reputation to post um, jobs that don't really exist, but they're using your good name and your good reputation. Believe it or not, LinkedIn is a treasure trove of information. They can find out who your head of HR is and use that name and that contact information for a bogus job listing and then skim people for money or personal information. It's it's kind of scary out there. But I, I'm sure, Daniel, this is not exactly <laughs> the platform you wanted to talk about scams, but more of along the lines of spring cleaning. So, yeah, it's a just... great advertisement for our scam webinar on May 5th. <laughs> and, and Leslie Fair is an awesome individual. So I might have to tune in and listen to that one. <laughs> Well, we hope you all do. We do have a few, we have another specific question and another point. Okay. So that I'm going to ask you the question uh, as directed to Patrice. And then while you're coming up with your, while you're thinking of your answer, Patrice, I'm going to make a comment that someone sent me uh, directly. And so Patrice, the question to you is, what do you think the number one action a small, medium sized enterprise should do? Uh, if they only do one thing, what should they do? Um, and we'll, we're going to narrow it down to cybersecurity. And so while you're thinking of that, I want to point out one comment that, um, Kurt, I don't know if you're still on the, on the call, but you sent me a, a message privately clear, or adding to one of our points. And when Sandra was talking about um, being critical of the information that you put on social media and on your online account, um, and and responding to surveys and all of that oh, that uh, people post. Um, Kurt made a great point in saying one of the worst ones is uh, the cities you lived in and providing <laughs> that information <laughs> or the street you lived on because yep. what do the credit bureaus ask when they're trying to verify you? They Absolutely. ask about mm -hmm. what city did you live in? What street did you live in? Yep. And so thinking about that type of information you know, as you create profiles, are you giving away answers to yeah. security verification questions? You know, mm -hmm. what, what's your mother's maiden name? Well, somebody could That's go right. to Facebook and find your mother's maiden name. You know? So um, just thinking critically about these. Um, and so with that, thank you, Kurt, for that point. I just wanted to bring it up to the group. Um, and then Patrice, uh, we'll kick it over to you to start with. Yeah. So. Um... If there, there would be, um, if there would be again a, a, a one thing. Um, again, I will give a non-honest answer here. Um, but if there is a one thing, and if the only thing that they could do, the one thing they could do, I would say um, to again secure and or discard personal, uh, personally identifiable data. Um, it, it is one thing that has. Uh, the potential of going many kind of way and one affect the reputation in the brand of your business failure to secure the the data that you are responsible to secure failure to discard them appropriately and, and in a safe manner um, could again damage the reputation of your business could even lead up to lawsuits and fines and and that for me, uh, I mean, again, not not just uh, 
you, you know, uh, thinking of anything else, um, that would be the one thing um, I would recommend. Um, again, <laughs> not honest answer, but I'll recommend that if there is the one thing that can be done by small, medium enterprises, it would be to find a way to be better and good at securing and or discarding personally identifiable data. Patrice, if I could ask you a question, cross panelist here, is is cybersecurity insurance the answer? Is that is that the bulletproof vest? Hmm. Bulletproof vest, I, I I don't think I would say that, but it's definitely something that um, a company should having the mean definitely look into. Okay, um, that's fair. Yeah, I will add to that. There, um, there is no bulletproof vest with cybersecurity. There's always going to be a way, but, particularly with yes, uh, you know, so many opportunities for employees to open accounts, yeah. use different technologies, get around policies and procedures, adopt new, bring in new Internet of Things devices onto your network. Oh my goodness, um, yes. So there's so many entry points and particularly now that we are teleworking more that's just multiplied uh, the amount of entry points that cyber criminals can get in and so um yeah i think you know patrice's point of understanding what data you're collecting that has to be one of the first things you do because again you can't figure out how to protect the information if you don't know what you're collecting and mm -hmm. then evaluate the level of um you know security that needs to be with each of those data points right um, and then being aware of where I, all those devices are like i mentioned before make sure you know where your stuff is <laughs> yes right well we don't have any other questions that have come in um and so you know i want to First off, and we are almost at the hour, so I want to thank you, Sandra and Patrice, for spending the hour with us and sharing your expertise. And I want to thank Trend Micro and Generali Global Assistance for making this webinar even possible for free for everyone and the entire Science for My Business program. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without their support, and so I want to thank them. Uh, for all of you who are on the line, this webinar has been recorded and will be shared with you. Um, once the file is rendered. So we'll, we'll be sending out a, a notification tomorrow um, that um, the, the webinar will be available to you uh, and the PDF of the slides. And so I wanna thank you all for taking the time to learn more about this topic and spending the hour with us. And with that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the week. All right. We hope to thank see you, you on a future much. webinar. Yes, okay. thank you. Thank you for having us. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.